now we have a, a blue ocean in the background. So we're going to come back to a concept that I've mentioned already a little bit in the earlier modules about blue ocean strategy. The topic that I've given the title is value innovation. Let's see what that means. So value innovation steps towards blue ocean strategy. The concepts introduced by Chan Kim and Rene Mauborn. Uh, by the way, Chan Kim taught the core strategy class in my MBA program at INSEAD. This concept of blue ocean strategy and the follow-up, the blue ocean shift, have been enormously important and successful in changing the way we think about management strategy. Let's see. Value innovation. So we see it's about innovation, which is something new, different. It's about a change. But we also bring the word value next. That brings in a customer focus. So it's market, not product oriented. So it's a value as perceived by the market, not, mark, not value as perceived by a technology. Right. That's important in the success of innovations in the marketplace and changes to the products and the way we do business. So effectively, we're looking at new ways of looking at markets, often cutting across existing structures. We aim for quantum leaps, big changes. The competitors are irrelevant. That might be a bit strange to you when we say competitors are irrelevant, but we focus entirely, us and the market, and do what we do extremely well and create something completely new. It's profitable innovation, of course, and in these cases, knowledge. Understanding knowledge is a premier strategic asset. Importantly, and here we start to think a little bit about leadership in organizational matters, everybody, everybody can contribute and can add to the value innovation. So basically they say that value innovation anchors innovation with buyer value. Two important questions we need to ask ourselves. First of all, are we offering customers radically superior value, radically superior? And is our price accessible to the market of buyers in our target market? So we're going to aim for something that's radically different and big sections, big markets, if possible. Typically, firms, successful firms, successful companies pursue both low cost and differentiation approaches. It is not easy, and it runs counter to a lot of thinking that's been out there in the strategy field, but it can be done if you want to be successful. Now, here is uh, an image that I've had for quite a while. Huh? What you can see is it's a funny-shaped watermelon. That's the case of Value innovation being different from technical innovation. How do they achieve this? Is it genetically modified? No. All that is done is there's a box, a constraint put around the watermelon, so as it grows, it can only take certain shapes. Very low tech, but maybe you know, it works in the marketplace. Now, I've had this image for a long time, and I've been impressed to see you know, lots of other you know, products out there using that same technology. Here we have a love heart or a Buddha. So, Halloween perhaps. So, and also you can see an orange there and an apple in different shapes, cucumbers. Maybe they're just naughties. Clearly they're not the major part of the market, but there are niches that could be useful for certain producers. Okay, so when we've got a value innovation, usually with an innovation, we're out there. We're the first in the market. So we have a bit of monopoly power, but we're looking at different monopoly behavior. First of all, there's the question of strategic pricing for demand creation and then target costing for pocket creation. So consider Swatch, Cirque du Soleil, Nintendo. What are we looking at here? So... Pricing that 
can open big sections of the market, as I said earlier, but we have to make sure that the costing is such that we can create a profit. So we can look at the execution of this later in the program. And pricing options, things like stakeholder engagement are important, and leadership. But let's see. Think about strategic pricing. We have to figure out what is a price that is acceptable in the marketplace, and from there, work out what the cost needs to be for there to be an appropriate profit margin for us. That is different from what we often see where manufacturers might say, it costs me so much to make a product, I need a profit margin, this is the price I need to sell it at. Then when you go to the market, the market consumers might say, no, we won't pay this. Always better, if you can, to work backwards. Look at the price, understand what costs you need to achieve for a acceptable profit, and then go forward.